and to Bolsonaro. Um, to tell us about LPG, the new low sulfur marine fuel for two stroke engines. So the floor is all yours. Okay. Um, good evening from my side and thank you for the invitation and um, I have to say thank you for organizing this magnificent event, uh, really well organized, thank you very much. Um, we are coming uh, here as MIN uh, full throttle and in full capacity, it's uh, not only myself who is uh, addressing you uh, today, um, I have uh, my colleagues Mr. Michael Jeppesen and Mr. George Rossos. Um, uh, they are here also to answer your question, so um, don't hesitate to reach us during um, uh, the breaks and um, we, we will be more than happy to answer your questions and engage in fruitful discussions. So, um, kickoff. Um, we 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 are very fond of this um, of this slide and this picture. I'm pretty sure that a lot of you have seen it um, in several of the events that we have participated in. Um, it is actually summarizing uh, some of the benefits uh, of the uh, selection that we did uh, by creating the concept of the MEGI and the sister the, the sister designs of MEGI and MLGI and sticking to the diesel cycle. Um, sticking to the diesel cycle, if I have to summarize what you also see, is that we have uh, no methane slip. Uh, the design is impervious to um, fuel quality. Um, it is uh, very responsive to uh, load fluctuations. And all these benefits um, have uh, resulted in uh, us having a success story in receiving, until now, more than 150 orders already. Uh, which means, actually, that um, I present to you this list of uh, references. Uh, this is what we have so far, and um, we already have been uh, receiving orders for the MELGI concept for methanol operation, um, and three of these vessels, uh, three of these engines have already been delivered. Uh, I'd like to make one clarification comment. The MELGI is a concept that can uh, accommodate both the operation of methanol and uh, LPG. Uh, and in order to uh, explain to you the distinction between those two and how we as uh, engine designers perceive this distinction, I, we have created this slide, we have actually uh, segregating the gas fuels into two categories, the gaseous uh, gases and the liquid gases, and we put that in brackets. Uh, mainly, uh, it is, oh, this actually means how the engine is receiving the fuel and in what form. Um, uh, with gaseous gases, we have uh, included LNG in that, in the brackets, uh, the engine is receiving the, uh, the fuel in, uh, in uh, gaseous form, and let me correct that, it is actually in the critical stage, so if you look at the uh, phase diagram of the fuel, it's not exactly gas, it's, it's a critical phase uh, fluid. On the liquid gases, the gas, the, the fuel is delivered in a liquid form. And there we have methanol and LPG, which is part of our discussion today. Correspondingly, you will find below the uh, two sister designs, the MEGI and the MELGI. What is the driver for that? Uh, well, this question has already been answered several times in uh, this event, during this event, in all these lovely presentations that we have been uh, um, uh, uh, watching. Um, the driver is actually the emission requirements from uh, the uh, uh, regulations and regulating authorities. Um, so now we have actually two drives. We have the NOx emission requirements and the SOx. As far as the NOx emission requirements, um, we have two solutions for these specific uh, designs, the SCR and the EGR. Both of them are readily available. Um, 
the uh, design now is um, focusing on uh, low sulfur fuels uh, because we have seen that uh, this is a comment that we have made also in previous uh, events that uh, until now the uh, NECAS has also, are also um, uh, SECAS so we have been focusing on that. Having um, addressed the NOx part, now we are addressing the SOx part. Um, uh, as my colleague from uh, Varsila also mentioned, you have several ways of addressing that. Um, one is um, just taking an, an ordinary uh, the laser pointer here, an ordinary MC MEC engine and uh, running it on uh, distillates, low sulfur. Um, another solution is um, using uh, scrubbers uh, to take out the, uh, the sulfur. By the way, this is an open cycle uh, system that we have included in this presentation. And the third solution is going for these uh, gases or uh, low uh, flash point fuels. Um, with this solution, uh, we are going to see also in the uh, later uh, slides that we use the gas with uh, pilot oil, pilot fuel as MGO, and um, this diminishes the uh, um, uh, the SOx uh, levels to the um, acceptable level. Um, now, since the topic is LNG, LPG. Why are we talking about LPG? Well, I'm not going to go through all these uh, points, but um, we have uh, already established uh, also in the previous presentations that there is a, a lot of uh, uh, cost savings involved. There is a lot of um, uh, uh, regulating uh, authorities and uh, regulations involved. Um, LPG, uh, as we have established, meets, uh, meets the uh, emission requirements. The LPG operation meets the emission requirements. Um, and uh, what I would like to underline is that the first cost, the capex of the LPG system, could be cheaper than uh, an SOX scrubber solution. Of course, there are. As we have already said, um, uh, choosing the right fuel uh, of the future is more or less a bet, uh, but LPG could be a good alternative for any price speculation. How does LPG compare to LNG uh, when we're talking about emissions? Um, well, as far as NOx, it is uh, uh, the reduction compared to uh, burning, uh, to operating a tier two engine on HFO is a bit less. So is the CO2. Uh, but as far as the uh, SOx, the sulfur oxides are concerned, and the particulates are exactly the same. Having said that, um, I would like to take us now to uh, more specific MIN uh, um, information. Uh, the LGI concept can be applied in all our engine range, starting from the 30 bore up to the 95 bore engines. Um, and uh, this is, this is a, a design that it can go all the way from the smallest to the bigger engines. From an operation point of view, and this is uh, very, very interesting as a slide, and we, uh, we have also used this quite a lot of times, um, when uh, you switch to a, a fuel operation, it is uh, actually a conventional uh, uh, diesel uh, fuel, uh, fuel oil burner uh, engine. Um, it has no difference than the ordinary engine that uh, you already have known. On dual fuel operation mode, again, we have to stress out the benefits. There are no fuel slips. Um, there are no knocking problems. Um, there are, it's insensitive to, uh, uh, to gas fuel. Um, and I'd like to, um, to underline this last line that it is uh, very 
responsive, well responsive to load changes. Um, I like to say that this engine does not care to look at the weather report. It just responds. It, it's just responsive. Um, good, good news is that we have reduced the required uh, pi oil pilot, uh, pilot oil amount from 5% to 3% and um, the uh, reduced uh, uh, necessary load for a gas operation to 10%. A lot of uh, uh, consideration, um, we have pointed out that there has been a lot of consideration uh, in the operators regarding the different supply pressures of, uh, of these uh, fuels. And the discussion was um, uh, uh, opened when we introduced the MEGI. Um, as far as the MEGI is concerned, uh, the uh, LNG burner is at 300 bar, uh, the one that you have already seen in MEGI presentations. Um, and uh, another piece of good news is that um, the ethane uh, uh, concept, the ethane design that we have, we have managed to reduce the delivery pressure from 600 bars to 400 bar. That actually gives us the uh, advantage of more or less using the same equipment as we use for LNG to the ethane burner engines. As far as the uh, LGI design is concerned, the pressures are uh, a lot um, uh, heavily reduced. The LPG is delivered at 50 bar and the uh, methanol at 8. Going more into the specifics of the, of the system, what comprises the system of the MLGI is actually the following. You have the fuel service tank, you have the uh, liquid fuel supply system. Again, we have already established which uh, pressure level this supply system works at. You have the fuel valve train, and then under the deck in the engine room, you have double wall piping, to supply the LPG into the engine. Um, two systems that we are going to be focusing a bit later in this presentation are the cooling oil system and the purge return system. Uh, there are some uh, interesting features in that. Just to give you a taste and a, a view of um, what are the specifics and the parts that, com that make actually the LGI, well, the only thing that changes uh, more or less are the uh, yellow parts that you see on this picture. We have also introduced a new design, the fuel booster injection valve, and again, the uh, operating uh, concept is that we introduce the gas fuel into the engine and the combustion is accomplished through the combustion also of the pilot fuel. A very interesting uh, information on this slide is the fact that the energy, uh, the engine efficiency with methanol is slightly better than when we're using diesel. Uh, I have to admit that um, uh, when news came to me, I was also surprised. This is very, very interesting. If we zoom into the cylinder head, just to see the components, new guy in town is the fuel booster injection valve. Um, this is actually uh, in, in, in green colors the uh, components that comprise uh, the heart of the LGI system. Um, and if we look into what we are introducing right now, this is uh, a cross section of the fuel booster injection valve. Uh, if I can explain to you the, the operating of this valve is that um, the uh, fuel is laterally uh, uh, in, uh, introduced in the valve. Uh, hydraulic uh, uh, pressure is uh, applied on the uh, plunger and then it pressurizes the fuel in this uh, chamber. The spring retracts and then you have ignition. And then reset and the whole cycle goes again. 
Another piece of good news is the fact that this piece of equipment will be also introduced in the uh, HFO operating engines. Um, it is a, a milestone that we have done with um, great benefits as far as uh, weight reduction is concerned and we also have an inc uh, a decrease in uh, specific fuel oil consumption. Um, coming back to the previous slide that I told you, we have these two uh, parts on the system, the cooling and sealing oil unit. Um, this is required because uh, inside the booster we have actually gaseous um, fuel, which means that it is a bit lighter, the density is lower, and you require um, cooling, uh, sealing, and uh, lubricity, which you cannot get without uh, this uh, uh, oil cooling uh, unit. Um, uh, one point why you need cooling is the fact that you, you want to avoid uh, evaporation of the liquid gas, use, uh, gas fuel inside the uh, booster unit. So this is the unit which is placed on the engine and this takes care that these three um, directions are abide to. This is how the engine looks at the end and you will see that the concept is similar to a, 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 a common rail system that is on the engine. Uh, as I have already stated, the yellow parts are the ones that are different than any other engine that you know already. And the last interesting feature that I would like to underline is the fact that when we purge the system with inert gas, um, in case of, a, uh, of, a, of an alarm, then uh, the, the, uh, the fuel that is purged is accumulated in this uh, drain and pipe receiver. Overall, I would like to conclude that um, uh, with this system, again, uh, we achieve high efficiency. Um, more or less, the efficiency is the same as a normal diesel engine. Um, the uh, operational cost, of course, is something that, uh, as we have established, is, uh, is a bet. Uh, it, it depends on the future fuel prices. Um, the reliability of the engine is as, as is unchanged. Going back to the MCC design, now to the MEGI, now to the MELGI, we have the same reliability. Um, we can fulfill tier three with the addition of uh, EGR and or SCR. Both of them are, as I have underlined, readily available. We have a 97% reduction in SOX. Um, and um, I will conclude um, I don't know how we are on a time scale. We have to conclude, okay. And I will conclude with the last piece of good news. This is our uh, one of the, uh, f the first methanol uh, MELGI driven uh, vessel. The th uh, one of the three that I have already mentioned. Um, this is actually uh, really, really uh, 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 of the self news uh, that I, we bring you today. So, this was this was it from my side. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to address them. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Plevrakis. Uh, do we have any questions? Okay, uh, then I have a question. Um, you mentioned on your last slides mm -hmm. that these engines will be available uh, for LPG March 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, is that when we expect to have the test bed, the first uh, prototype uh, uh, trials? Ah. Or like, be on you, the you, want, you want to, to respond to that? Yes, this is provided that we get orders. <laughs> so far, we have no orders. We have methanol orders, and nine orders total, uh, but for LGI, we don't have orders yet. So, if we get the order very soon, then we will be av available with our engine in 2018. And uh, I'm transferring a, a question now. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Can you tell us on the commercial side what kind of uh, capex increase we are talking about if we compare MELGI with an MEGI? Have you done this kind well, of comparison? Because I see a lot of innovative uh, yes, there technology is, there. Is, there. Is, yes, we have, we have, going to pay. Correct, correct. We have done the comparison. You should, you should expect uh, lower, uh, lower price, lower capex for uh, an LPG than uh, the MEGI. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Yeah. But comparison to a, a normal diesel fuel mm -hmm. engine, the capex will be probably yes. twenty percent higher. Correct. But uh, the LPG uh, uh, engine has low uh, fuel pressure, fuel supply system, and that means uh, this is a, a cheaper capex than for the MEGI engine, which has a three hundred bar for the injection. So there's a difference, definitely. The engine itself, twenty percent. Twenty percent, yes. We have one more question, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lins, and, uh, thank you. And uh, we, uh, our shipyard are looking for the LPG as a fuel solution for, mm -hmm. uh, I think, more than five years. But as you know, the LPG is heavier than the air. Mm -hmm. And if there is some slip from the main engine, the LPG will accumulate at the bottom of the engine room. And until now, the, uh, I'm not sure I'm all having permission for the LPG as a fuel or not. And uh, what is your solution? to uh, control the risk of the LPG sleep in MEGI? Oh, good question. Okay. Um, I, have, I have shown a slide previously, which is actually this one. There is a concept uh, of uh, purging the system um, when we have an alarm, for example. Um, we have double wall piping, again, more or less in the same concept as we have for the MEGI, but we have taken into account the fact that we, when we're talking about LPG, we're talking about, as you said, uh, heavier, uh, heavier uh, fuel. Um, the concept is, uh, it would be, it would take actually a, a bit of time to explain to you so that we can do it during the break. Um, but if I can just outline uh, what we have is uh, the double wall pipe. We have again um, the uh, venting uh, system. We have also the uh, the uh, carbon um, hydrocarbon sniffers that purge the double wall pipes. Um, and this feature actually is done so that we can uh, treat this heavy uh, gas fuel in a manner that uh, we can uh, secure that it is accumulated in areas where it can be controlled. Of course, the specifics of the system that drains that residual, that accumulating air, that uh, gas that you are saying, cannot be shown here, but uh, we, can, uh, we can address that uh, in, in the break. It's, it's, it's quite a big discussion. Okay, thank you very much for the nice presentation and answering the questions. Thank you.